<laughs> they don't want disruptions, but if you want to wiggle with it, you can do that. Come on. Right? <laughs> Feel free. All right, then. So I'm so happy to see you all today. And uh, we're going to start with a little introduction, which will center us, you see, so that we all know what we're going to be talking about. Um, for musicians, performance is a form of autobiography. I'm a professional autobiographer, James Taylor says. Whether the artists have written their own material or are occupying someone else's, the task of communicating words and music in ways that prove meaningful to others almost always means connecting with the personal on stage, working out past or current experiences, and channeling those memories and feelings and psychic flashes. Roseanne Cash um, said that her father, Johnny Cash, worked out his troubles on stage in search of some sort of uplift or salvation, or at the very least, forgiveness. The songs may not be literal retellings of the artist's life, but the performances, the music and the spontaneous movement that that music inspires are telling. Go on YouTube and look at Nina Simone live in Antibes singing the Bee Gees hit To Love Somebody. Or watch the movie Maestro to the very end and you see the real face of, of Leonard Bernstein as he's conducting. His inner life seems to be there for all to see. So when a musician decides to write a book or a memoir or a book of poem, poems, as these fine people have, they deserve extra thanks because it's a precious kind of lanyap. They've already told us plenty on stage and now they want to say even more. Big Frida, God Save the Queen Diva by Big Frida with Nicole Ballin and Vulnerable AF, poems by Tariana Tank Ball get down to the feel of life in different but compatible ways. Big Frida and Tank Ball have been frequent collaborators and have shared many other stages before today, and yet today may be different because we're going to talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end of love. Please welcome the recording artist, television personality, uh, Big Frida. Please, uh, Big Frida means business on Fuse TV. And ambassador of Bounce uh, Music, Big Frida. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. <laughs> And of course, please welcome the recording artist, the poet, the slammer, the leader of the band Tank and the Bangas, Tank Tariana Ball. Come on, Gwen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so now that I have you in my clutches, okay, I'm gonna ask you all kinds of rude questions, but this is not a quiz, you know what I mean? So there are no right or wrong answers, and if you don't wanna answer something, we'll just move on, right? All right, so Tank Ball, we're gonna start with you. Okay. You're such a great storyteller on stage, you know, on video, um, in your book, in your poems, uh, you know, and you recognize that there are so many different kinds of love. There's erotic love, there's romantic love, there's agape love, there's familial love, there's self-love, right? So tell us about one of the first times that you recall seeing romantic love in your life, with your own eyes? My own eyes. I think I had to be a teenager. I always tell people that I grew up around the corner from a theme park. I grew up right around the corner from Jazzland. It was just the most magical childhood ever. And I remember going on a date with my big sister and her first boyfriend, Ezekiel. And I just remember it was around Christmas time. The lights were up and they were just walking, holding each other's hand. And I was thinking, Oh my goodness, this is what love is and I want I want that for I want that too. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. It was really beautiful. Yeah. People don't hold hands anymore. Mm, I like to hold hands. <laughs> <laughs> Do too. A lot. Right. Yes. Well, in your book, your book of poetry talks about um, a love relationship, a love, a romantic love. And um, at the very beginning, I wonder if you capture what you saw when you were a kid, when you, um, in your poems on uh, page 23 and 25 of your book. So I'm hoping you'll give a little reading of those two poems. Let's see. Drumsticks. Okay. His hands are like drumsticks, long, rough, hard, delicate, smooth, 
rude, passionate. I would break if he touched me. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> and what's the next one? <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Okay, professionals. If I look over my shoulder, I know you'll be there, breaking when I say break, listening for the highs and lows in my voice, perfectly patrolling my cadence. Please, only for the songs. My heartbeat doesn't need you to keep its rhythm. Wow. Mm, that was mean, huh? <laughs> That's All <something>. right. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing he was a drummer. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and so, Big Frida, can you can you remind us of of, of uh, when you felt like you saw romantic love for the first time in your life? Mm. Who was it? What did it feel like? What did it look like? What did it smell like? What did it um, sound like? When I first saw romantic love, it was my mom and my stepdad. I, you know, I woke up with it every day in my household. You know, growing up in a shot bed, uh, shotgun house on Josephine Street. And we had a two bedroom and we, all the kids were in one. It was me, my brother and my sister and my mom and dad had their room. And just the passion and love that they had for each other, you know, from the, from the love making to the, to, to the fighting, we saw it all. And it- You saw the love making? Uh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I used to tell my mama, mom, hang a sheet up or something, you know? <laughs> This Jesus. was the mirror, the dresser was on the wall, and our bunk beds were like where we can see through the mirror. Girl, it was the worst. <laughs> That's why your music. <laughs> it was the worst. I was like, my y'all are t traumatizing us. Trauma. <laughs> she said, You should be asleep. Oh, oh my God. There is a line in the book where or your mother, Miss Vera, says, uh, I'm the only one having sex in this house. Yes, right? most definitely. <laughs> But um, what's interesting about God Save the Queen Diva is that you talk about a series of firsts, you know? You uh, talk about the first time you, um, you stood up to your stepfather. You yes. talk about the first time you fooled around with a boy. You talked about um, coming out to your mother uh, and, and, and all. And so can you, um, can you share a little bit from your book in a story about a fella by the name of Hockey? Yes. That was a that was a pseudonym. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, most definitely. Hockey was was my one of my first loves. For you met sure. him in college? No, I met him actually. Um, I was working at a middle store, which was on Martin Luther King, and I was doing you know selling beepers and working the the night window with with the store. And so um, I had never been one to flirt. As a gay boy in the hood, I learned early that throwing game at another boy could get me beat down. But at, I was 21 and I was getting tired of being undercover. It was like I was out and everyone knew I was gay. But I was told not to be too flamboyant in my relationship status, I was ignored completely. Somehow courage came over me because I uttered, you so cute, and then added, here, take this. I slid him a note with my number. Cool, cool, he said, placing the piece of paper into his wallet and walking out the door. Right before the door shut, he turned around and said, I'm Hassan, but they call me Hockey. What's your name? Freddie. I closed that place down thinking of that boy who came in that night with the cute fade haircut. When I got home that morning, I had a little extra skip in my step. <laughs> <laughs> every, every time my phone buzzed, I hoped it was hockey. Finally, he called. We talked for hours. When I got off the phone, I realized my body had broken out in a sweat. <laughs> I had about an hour to sleep before I had a decorating gig for my family down the street. Blowing a red and silver balloons, all I could think of was hockey. When I got home, I called him to come see me tonight. I said, by this point, my mom had had started dating with this man, Keith. He was a postman and none of us liked him. <laughs> he, he, it was just his attitude. Like he thought he was too good for my mama kids, but my mama liked him and that meant she spent a lot of nights away and it was just me and Crystal and Adam. I never had a guy to come to my house. It was a bold move, but I was one to, to make it ready. There you go. 
There you go. I know about the low moments. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> There's nothing like first love. Nothing yes, indeed. Like it. Oh my goodness. Mom was always dating somebody we don't like. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And all. Uh, and so, Tank, when you, um, you know what I mean, in your book of poems, your poems are really interesting because they're laced with all kinds of flashbacks from your life. It's not just a, you know what I mean, sort of a chronological storytelling experience. You, you, you play with time yes. in this book, which is really interesting. And you also seem to recognize that we all have a million different time zones within us. Mm. We might be having a conversation, but you and I might be responding to things that actually happened to us a long time ago. You know, there's a lot of wisdom in what you write and all. So can you talk a little bit about time and how you, and why you decided to break up time in your story about this relationship? Because I believe that the, some of the biggest parts of who I am is definitely related to my upbringing and my sisters, you know, my sisters were there a lot and they gave me a lot of influence and a lot of lessons. And I didn't live a lot of life because they had so many lessons for me from their life, you know? So I was living through them a lot and they just had so much to tell me all the time that I always, I recall that when I'm, when I'm talking to someone new, you know, how would my sister want me to act? You know, uh, how would I respond? How would they respond? You know, because they put so much inside of me I think I always wanted to make them proud, even though they obviously weren't the people or the person I was dating. <laughs> and so you're the youngest child? I'm the youngest girl. You're the youngest girl, and you're the oldest child. I am Frida. the oldest. And so does, that, does this ring true to you in, in the sense of when you have been in relationships, do you actually, in your mind's eye, uh, recognize that you are responding when you're talking to someone you're responding to something that happened to you a long time ago in another relationship maybe or in another circumstance most definitely yeah most definitely talk more well you know just me growing up I've, I've had you know several relationships but you know I would always relate back to one of the others you know and it will be something that will make me rekindle that that moment that maybe me and a previous guy I had before. You know, I didn't have a lot of guys that w I was able to be out with. You know, most of the guys that when I was growing up, it was all undercover guys. They were all straight guys in the, in the hood who maybe had a girlfriend or a baby mama. And so the relationships wasn't out publicly, but it, we had a, 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 a strong connection. They would come sleep at the house. They would be with me all the time and no one ever knew. You know, it's funny because military strategists always uh, admonish um, nations because they say when nations go to war, they tend to fight the last war, you know what I mean, and not the war that they're actually fighting. Right. And um, so they're using, you know, swords when they should be using tanks. They're using tanks when they should be using, you know what I mean, ICBMs. They're using all sorts of old tools. And, um, and I think that that might apply to relationships too. You were, in, you were in a relationship with X last year, and when you enter into a relationship with Y, you're using all the same communication skills that you use with X. Can't do that. You know what I mean? But this is Y. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Y is different. Yeah. You know, I mean, some things be different, you know, in, in the relationship and, and things that you try to get the approach. But when you get that same thing that may bring you back to that you had with X, you know, you relate to that same situation. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I've had boys that they always have to be undercover. So all of the relationships kind of. It recycled itself, and I had to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's true. And so, you know, it's interesting because every, you know, when people think about bounce music, they think it's high energy dance music. They think about the daring of twerk. They think about the eroticism. But I have to say that I think that you channel a lot of of different experiences into your songs. I do. And so, um, for instance, you know, you've got. Um, motherly love going on in your songs you know you've got godly love going on in your songs you know what i mean due to your relationship to your church you've got brotherly love going on particularly with regard to a song like platinum yeah. you know what i mean where you're just trying to get people to understand how grateful they sh we all should be yeah, you know what i mean about definitely. what all the gifts that we have but in and then you also sort of demonstrate uh, um heartbreak in a song like crazy which sounds like you're just really mad but mad is just heartbreak yeah. loud <laughs> Most definitely. I mean, 
a lot of times, I, you know, I would lash out because it couldn't be public or I couldn't say the things that I wanted to say or act the way that I wanted to act because, once again, it's undercover. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So a lot of times, if I would have a moment, they'd just go away and, you know, I can't really do nothing about it. I can't go pull up to his house or pull up to the club and act out. You know, I have to really just hold all of that within. That's nuts. It's just nuts. I mean, you know, you know, relationships are already a uh, fraud, but the idea of having to, you know, have a, as they say, the Bella Figura, the the happy face, you know what I mean, that yeah. uh, behind which, you know, I mean, nobody knows what's happening, is an is 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 an awful lot of pressure on an individual. Most definitely, I can recall one time hockey. Him and his family was having some issues and they had got kicked out the project. And so he had um, moved to Atlanta without telling me anything. Yeah. I didn't know where he went. And that was the time when I like lost all the weight because I didn't talk to him. He had no cell phone. He left for like three to five months. Then he pops back up at the club and smiling. And I'm like, ready to kill him, but I can't do anything because we at the club and everybody, you know, nobody knows. So, but I did punch him in the face when we did get home. But <laughs> I'm like, look, look what you done me, you know? And I mean, the weight just started dropping. I could not eat anything. I just turned to weed. I was just like, you was heartbroken. I was definitely That's heartbroken. Right. And you had been sort of a, you know what I mean, sort of a um, a chubby child. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And he, he, so my mom was staying with Keith and he had stayed with us. Hockey would be at my house for like a year straight every night and then just disappeared. And then just disappeared. Oh, wow. So Tank, let me ask you this. In Vulnerable AF, you know what I mean, there's a story in there called The Cycle. Mm. which, you know, which sort of gets at what the middle of a relationship is like, mm. right? Mm. And, um, and this is when, in the middle of a relationship, you tend to start making connections about, like, what kinds of um, patterns you all have as, as a couple. Yes. You know, behavioral patterns. Mm -hmm. And not all of them are great, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but some of them work. You know. And uh, so I was wondering, would you mind reading a little bit of, uh, from Cycle? The Cycle, I'm sorry? It's, I think it's uh, 37. 37, yeah. 37. All right. Uh, I love when I'm with one of my bangers because we normally like, he plinks it a song and I sang it with him. It's so pretty. Um, the cycle, super glue, tape, broke, broken, fix it, fix him, appreciate him, love him, show him, teach him, tell him, forgive him, repeat, write, write for him, sing, sing for him, see if he loves you now, does he love you yet, repeat, fuck, it's broke again, repeat, glue, gorilla glue, wrench, screwdriver, fix him, hearing aid, what, damn, this sucks, he sucks, you suck, naked, love him, vulnerable, hate him, heal him, hug him, mop, wash, clean, wear again, forgive, affection, forget, kiss him, repeat, Hate him, recite, broke again, stare at him, stare at each other, cry, start again, lock eyes, find the key, admit, confess, cry, write, feel, breathe, write, repeat, and realize that he was never yours to fix or heal. Now forgive yourself for pretending to be a Band-Aid and heal yourself. Okay. Yes. That's crazy. That is wow. <laughs> That's how it is, right? Yeah, like, it we is. just keep going. It's crazy. That is familiar. It is definitely yeah. a cycle. <laughs> that is familiar. Oh my gosh. And so, as, as performers, both of you all, this is interesting to me, and not many artists do this, but both of you all are very comfortable channeling your inner child, <laughs> you know, channeling those childhood experiences. You can sound like a little girl on a record tank. You know, mm -hmm. and at this in the same song, sound like a grown ass woman. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, and so and 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 Frida, you um, you remember, well, you remember that song, Oh Heart, that you sing? Love that, that one. Denise. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite so, one. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, can I get you to sing just a little bit of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we here. <laughs> that microphones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it'll start off with the keys, almost sounding like. Uh, 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 a toy box. I go, I'm a bee and you're a tree on a moon cloud in the sea. 
We're islands, we're done. Who am I kidding? You're the one. Oh, heart, oh, heart, stop making a fool of me. And I go, fool, 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 fool of me. Yes. yes. Love that one. One of my favorites. <laughs> It's so good. It's so good. Thank you. And, and then also, it, Big Frida, you know, you, you know, in your la on your last EP, which I love, BDE, right? And you do, you and Tank do um, Betty Bussett. Oh, yeah. And you do a lot of songs. Like with, with Tank, you've done songs with uh, Katie Red, And, you know, you, you, you conjure the, the playground, you know what I mean, as you're uh, Yeah, I talking. mean, you know, I, we want to go to different different heights with when we're making our music. We want to go into different memories. And, you know, a lot of times I take I go back to my childhood. That was such an, a fun time growing up, especially in New Orleans, and just making music and seeing all of the creative people that I was around musically. Um, it allows me to be able to, you know, step into all those different areas, especially gospel, you know. I'm actually working on my new gospel album. Is that right? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful. You give me middle school. Uh-huh. You give me middle school yeah. and high school vibes. Yeah. Like, most... not elementary, but, like, middle school, like... Oh, oh yeah, we was beating on the walls, yeah. Like, total middle school vibes when, because everybody thinks that high school is really important. It's really middle school. That's right. That's yeah. when the hormones that, oh are really my Lord, at their strongest. That's when you really get challenged, I feel like, and that's when certain conversations come into play, certain sexuality comes into play, and it's just, um, you're really trying to find yourself. In high school, I feel like you coast a little more than you did with the rockiness of middle school. Most definitely. Yeah. I mean, middle school teachers are like, Angels. I mean, I don't know how they handle it because of all the uh, the hormones they're dealing with in one classroom. You know, fifth graders. Fifth they're graders the meanest. Are the worst. <laughs> they're the meanest. And all. And so, but what's interesting is that what you're do, what you seem to be doing is, uh, you know, you're acknowledging both of you that um, you mean that the person standing in front of us is a voting member of the public. You know, you're over 18. You're doing, you know, you, you got a house note, you got a car note, whatever. But that you're always going to be that little young person at the same time, right? And, and which is the thing that you, you know, can reveal to, a, you know, to a lover, essentially, you know, and, um, and all. And so do you remember uh, Betty Bussett? That's not a love song, but do you remember that song? Betty Bussett? Of course. I... <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with that song? And do you remember any lines from it? Um... Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Buffett. So uh, as I was thinking of just like creating the album for BDE, we just were, um, you know, I wanted to pay homage to, you know, some black women that, you know, were in the game back in the G. And um, Betty Buffett actually is one of those songs that, that, that pays homage to, you know, um, and you spoke about Esther. You, yeah, I spoke about Esther. You educated me about that. Yeah. I didn't even know that Betty Boop was originally a black woman. Yeah, Betty actually. Boop was originally a black woman. And so we wanted to, um, you know, talk about Esther. And so that's how Betty Buster came into life. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just felt good going back to, back to once again, childhood, you know, seeing Betty, Bo Betty Boop on TV and all of that. And when I found out the history, I was like, well, we're going to do something about that. You That's know? pretty good. That's and the video was so cool. We all had our finger waves in and our, you know, our big feathers. We yeah, channeled a time. We, we had a it good time with the video. It was very Harlem Renaissance. Yeah. <laughs> it was very Harlem yeah, Renaissance. It's it true. Do you remember any of the melody? <laughs> 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 you don't remember? Now, come on, you know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Not offhand right now. Yes, you do. I, I, can you breathe on your own? Okay. Because the beat got me going. When shoulders, knees, touch your tail, babe. Betty, Betty bust, it bust it down, bust it down, bust it down. Bust it down. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little story about a daddy named Betty. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> you know I remember Big Gwen. <laughs> she, she, what's that line? Huh? What did you just say? Here's a little story about a baddie named Betty. Betty about a bag and a bag is never empty. Blowing budgets on these bitches because these bitches keep you busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And so Tank, you um 
You know what I mean? Your poems begin with the end of love. That's how the book begins, mm. with the end. And your book is dedicated to the boy with the deepest mud, mud puddles, puddles that I've, I've ever, ever stepped, stepped in. in. Yes. Which is such a great line. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so, you know, again, you're like an adult, but you're like a little kid too. Isn't that you know? crazy? And, uh, and so um, what made you want to go public with this story? Not in song. I know, right? but on the page, which, mm. you know, lasts a long time. Yes, it took mm. a couple of things to come to that place. Number one, I never ever intended for this to come out to the public. This was just for him. I wrote it for him, <laughs> I gave it to him, and I was like, I want you to know that someone loved you, somebody cared about you, and I also want you to know how you made me feel. And um, so it was his for years. And then when COVID happened and everybody was just, you know, there's nothing to do. I think my best friend was like, Tank, I think it's time for you to put your book out. And I, I asked for his blessing, and it went from there. Really? Yes. Wow. So that's very interesting that it was a personal, it was, it was a sort of a missive. It was sort of a, a letter of poems mm. to someone that you ultimately decided to share with everybody else. Yes. Do you regret it? No, yeah. not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I mean, number one. It's amazing. First of all, everybody has these feelings. And even and, and, and what we're, Frida and myself, I think, are so lucky to do is give people's words feelings, give, the, give their feelings words, because everyone, they don't know what to say. And I just think that God has blessed us in such a way that we're able to express it. And um, you can give this to somebody else. People have told me, men and women, that they relate to this book so much. I never expected anyone to relate to it. And I don't know why people think that if you have a blue check that you are not going through heartbreak or feeling played, you do. And it's also very amazing when your pain can give you a paycheck. So great. Well, there you go. Uh-huh. There you go. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can second that motion. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel that way when you wrote your memoir, Frida? Did you feel like uh, like this was the right thing to do? Do you regret anything that you put in there? Would you have liked to have put something else in? Um, there's so much more that could have went in um, because there were so many this details to everything that's for every chapter and it it just was not you know the book would have been I mean an encyclopedia book you know um but um you know my next book will probably tell you know are you working on your next book well I'm working on the kids book right now you're doing a children's book so after the kids book then we'll probably go back to another memoir Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Um, you know, it would be interesting also as a stage play, to be honest with you. You I mean some of the the stories that you talk about? Some oh of yeah, the we are working on that as a play, and um, where we're actually trying to turn it into a movie. Oh boy! Yeah. Are you going to play you? Well, I, I plan to play me at a certain point. <laughs> Can I play me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay. All right. The, well, Frida, you know uh, your relationship with hockey ended and um, as some relationships do at least the earthly aspect of it ended because he died unexpectedly he died violently yes and um and and you have a scene in that book where you talk about going to the funeral would you like to share it with us sure hockey's funeral was at a church in the night war but i can't recall the name It was all kind of fog. I went numb as I prepared the lilies and carnations for the service. Even more painful, I felt like a total stranger as I walked into the church that day. No one knew who I was, but I was but I was hockey's first love, his real love, a secret he had hidden from all, for all those years. As I searched the place of an empty seat, a woman in the front row turned around and stood up. As soon as our eyes met, I recognized hockey nose and eyes. It was his mama. Freddie, she said, her, with her swollen eyes. I nodded instantly, shocked that she even knew who I was. Come here, she said, waving me over the same hand grasping tissue. I walked over tentatively, wondering how she knew me and what she knew of me. Sit here, she said, pointing to the seat next to her. I stepped past some people already seated and took the spot by Hockey's mom. We hugged but said nothing. There was, no, there was nothing to say. I sang along to pass me not, O gentle savior, and amazing grace, hoping the song would bring me to some peace. But at the end of the service, hockey mom turned to me and said, he love you, Freddie. Thank you, I said, trying to stay co- composed. When the service was over, I went to the repast. When it was time to leave, I got into my car, leaving my head, 
leaning, leaning my head on the back seat as I, I flooded tears started streaming down my face, I thought this might be impossible to get over. Yeah, it's, it was it was tragic. It was a really it was really awful. Yeah, um, he died on Fourth of July, and um, I was actually at a concert in Kenner at for uh, Teen Summit, and he was twenty five at the time and had been shot twenty five times. Yeah, I'm very sorry. You know, I mean, every time I read that passage, it's it it's it communicates so much. A the fact that this was first love and you were always going to remember it. B, the ending you will never forget. C, that, that hockey is going to be young forever in your mind. Most definitely. And he's going to be a, like a locket that you're gonna carry around with you for the rest of your life, you know, in amber. And, um, and so, you know, these kinds of situations are most, um, become most um, revelatory at, at, unfortunately, in moments of tragedy, where Hockey's mother recognizes you as the love of his life. She did. And, uh, and she, she knows, you, you didn't think she would know, and maybe even Hockey didn't think she would know, but people know. Yeah, she knew. Just like you all, when you were noticing first love when you were children, mm -hmm. you knew well, without definitely. anybody ever saying to you, we're in love. Mm -hmm. You know it. You know when your child is in love. You know when My your best friend's in love. My mama knew all kind of stuff, and I was, I was like, how'd she even know that? <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about it is uh, when you think of, you know what I mean, when you think of that story of hockey's hockey story and yours what do you take from it um what do you take from it i you know i i'm i'm grateful for the moments that we share together and um i think that you know hockey was brought into my life for a, a certain reason to be able to um you know also have me to be able to have someone that that really loves me even though that we couldn't ha be have it as public as I would wanted it to be, um, we shared a lot of great moments. We we talked a lot. We had a lot of secrets together. Th things that we did, and um, it just made me stronger, you know, for the next relationship, you know. And um, unfortunately, it was two guys that I dated that was killed here in New Orleans, and uh, Hockey was one, and Comanche was the other. And Comanche was the other. And um, do you think that? Um you know, when you talk about growing up um, on Josephine Street, uh, you know, and how difficult it was to be gay, to be, um, you know, I mean, and to be open about it, do you think that in any, at, on any measure, that the situation has changed, either in New Orleans or elsewhere? Well, it definitely changed in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm the queen of bounds. <laughs> But That's I, right. I, you know, <laughs> as, as I grew up and um, after getting out of middle school and as I started to go to high school, I started to believe in myself and I started to become more confident. And I said that I was going to be the first queen to be able to come up, guys could be able to come up to and feel comfortable and not feel threatened. I was a queen that was, you know, large, and I was also holding a purse. And so I wanted to help change the way that New Orleans felt about a gay person. And so I was just this, you know, this, this gay boy that was out the hood and, you know, wanted everybody to love me and respect me. And I fought for those rights, you know, my whole time growing up. And high school was where I started to figure out how to, to train the people that was around me to respect me and to love me and that I'm not backing down. And so, but if there's, a, if there's another Freddie Ross Jr. or another Freddie Ross on Josephine Street, you know, a tween or a, you they, know, right now, 
does, do you think that that kid has a better shot? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Um, there was many Freddie Rosses growing up, uh, you know, on side of me. I had my best friend Adolph. I had, you know, younger people like Kelvin and all of the other, you know, Pee Wee, the ones that grew up under me. And there is some younger gay boys around there now, and they definitely have a better shot just from the foundation that we laid the years previous. Excellent, excellent. And, um, and so let me ask you this, uh, Tank. You... Um, you know, you uh, end this book, I, because, I suppose because you were, you know, you wanted this book to go to one individual. So you end this book, you mean, talking about the end. But is it ever the end? <laughs> mm, um, you'll discover that in my second book coming out very soon. <laughs> 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 the end is yeah. a new beginning. I will, I will, I will say the the the, the title to you guys because I've never said the title to anybody. But I'm currently working on the thing about falling. The think about the thing. The thing about the falling. Think about falling. Look at that. You like it? You heard it here Thanks. first. Mm -hmm. You heard it here Let's first. Let's go, you agree? <laughs> oh my goodness. And so, in in the end, you know, when you look back at this at this relationship with your drummer, when you look back at this relationship, I didn't say my drummer. I say a drummer. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am very sorry. When you look back at this relationship with a drummer, um, and and you look back at this relationship with uh, hockey, was it worth it? Most definitely. Some days I wonder. <laughs> definitely. I wonder because, I mean, I mean, you know, come on, like, who wants to go through all of these things? But I, the only thing that honestly keeps me, like, knowing that it was is because I wrote the poems and I wrote the songs that help other people today. Mm. And that's when I say, okay, if I never would have went through that experience, I would never have Old Heart. I wouldn't have Walmart. I wouldn't have boxes and squares. I wouldn't have my books. So it was supposed to help somebody else. It just really just, it just was. Mm. And so your your autobiographies continue then, not only on on the page but on stage as well, because you know just as we were I was saying in the beginning, you know the stage is such an opportunity to work out yes. so much that's going on in your mind. You know, talk about that. <laughs> you made me think directly about Frida because I'm like, you do not want to go to a show and Frida's pissed off. You are about to get you about to get all his business. <laughs> tell you everything. You didn't pay the rent this month. Uh -huh. like, well, see, I think that the hockey relationship prepared me for the Devon relationship, <laughs> you know? I was so undercover in secret so long, and then when I, you know, found this boy who I was able to be out and about with and the world knew, you know, it, I think the undercover relationship helped me to prepare for this relationship now that is, you know, known by the world. And, um, that yeah, can't I, be easy, though. Yeah, that it, can't be easy. No, I mean, if but everybody I, knows I who your paramour is. I think it gave me is. that balance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It gave me a, a sense of balance, being that I was undercover for so long. And then once I got to Devon, I was like, I am not doing this no more. I am, I'm about to tell everybody, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it kind of forced me to, like, stand up and, and step out. It forced you into the sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were saying, Tang. You definitely get to exercise those demons, definitely. Um, you get to cry, you get to be so vulnerable, and you get to dance, you get to laugh, and it's so crazy because you're in a room full of strangers, but at that moment, you tell them things that you couldn't tell someone that you've loved for years. And I don't know where that strength comes from or that honesty or that vulnerability, but you feel that with that microphone. It's just, it's something about it. it it's, it's a power. It's a, it's a powerful moment. Um, and, it, and it feels amazing to get to share yourself with people in that very special way. Oh boy. Well, I tell you, I want to leave it there because it's, uh, you know, it's the truth, <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying and all. But it is interesting because I remember years ago talking with Tony Bennett and, uh, and he was saying how, uh, you know, you may sing the same songs every night but they don't hit you the same way every night. They don't. And you may find meaning in one song that you didn't find the night before, mm -hmm. and you may find, you know, no, you know I mean? You might gloss over something that was quite important to you yesterday. Yes, ma'am. You know? and, uh, and so what, uh, leave us with, um, with A, a song that you sing, that you, that, that you enjoy singing because it, it, it helps you on stage, it helps your mind, it helps your heart on stage. 
something that you've done and something that somebody else has done that you love? Mm, a song that helps me on stage. I mean, all of them help me, honestly. Yeah. Um, but Jen and My System is just such a it's that. just such a great song. <laughs> I mean, growing up and just you know being able to 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 go back to that old feeling when I was a kid and when I made the song and just the things that were happening around in my life and um, everybody just was so happy and we were just we were just having fun just. You know, it's it's just not like that anymore. So that song still brings me a lot of joy when I'm on stage. Because it's nostalgic for you. Yeah. Okay. But it's also, it seems like it must be safe for you, too. It brings you back to a safe place. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. When I was growing up and, and when I first started the music. Mm -hmm. And so it brings me back to that that beginning. Uh, yeah. Because a lot of people say going on stage, it's, 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 it's very anxiety producing sometimes. It can but, be. Yeah. So when you start with Jen and my system, at that safe place, this is where I come from. This is when I was happy. Yeah. And I'm going to communicate that. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, be thinking about a song that somebody else sings that you want to tell the people about, right? Because they want to walk away knowing something that they can tell their friends at their dinner table tonight, right? Okay, so what about you, Tank? I mean, Tank, yeah. It's so many. Which one of your songs? I love a lot of my songs. Uh, well, I then, really you do. know, it's free country. But lately, you can tell yeah. since I have been on tour, the Thank Tank Tour, which is Tank and the Banger's first album, you know, which won all these hearts from Tiny Desk. We just did that tour. And just singing theme parks now, like in this particular space in my life where, you know, I am embracing love, it just feels, it hits, it hit different. It hit different now. <laughs> They're all like, woo, singing this feels just beautiful. It feels, it feels godly. It just, what, what are the amazing. words? Oh, stop. <laughs> Go and listen. <laughs> theme parks um, available online. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, no, you don't have to sing it, but just tell us a few of the lines. Oh, man, it's like, you are a beautiful surprise. And I'm going to leave it right there. Oh, <laughs> beautiful surprise. I know. Yes, okay, so. And, and something that, um, you know, I always listen to, I mean, I, uh, one of Luther Vandross, Here and Now is one of my favorite songs. It's beautiful. Um, and um, my mama got married off that song. Yeah, and I plan to get married off it one day if I ever get married. And um, <laughs> stay tuned. Uh, about a, huh? Huh? Yeah, here, yeah, but here and now, it is. Mm -hmm. And so, what about you, Tank? I'm gonna have to go to Stevie Wonder almost anything because my dad used to sound like Stevie Wonder, and every time he he he's on the radio, I say, "Oh, daddy here." Daddy here, daddy listening, or daddy approves, or daddy got a message for me. Oh. And it's always at the perfect time that Stevie is playing. So um, it's going to be everything by Stevie Wonder. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty wonderful. It pretty is. wonderful. Well, I tell you what, I, I'd, I'd love for us to um, talk even longer. and we'll, um, Maybe we'll have another opportunity sometime soon. With our yeah. books. You and all. But, I'd, um, but I, I want to congratulate you both on your books. They're amazing books. Thank you and, so much, uh, Thank man. you, Tariana Tank Ball. Um, who was the author of uh, Vulnerable AF, a book of poetry, and, uh, and also Big Frida, who is the author of Big Frida, God Save the Queen Diva, along with, uh, with uh, Nicole Ballin. And uh, thank you so very much for joining us thank today. You. At thank Land. you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at my mama. <laughs> hey, mom. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Thank you.